We just made this portable two-tier craft booth checkout counter. We cut it on our Eon Nova 14 and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, Bill Gonna Make It? So do we. And we have new videos each week. Craft show season is here. And I have something good for you to check out. It's a new and improved craft booth checkout counter. Now we made a checkout counter a few years ago and it was great. It served its purpose, but over time we found it was a little clunky and a little too heavy for us to carry to the craft shows. And I pinched my fingers more than once. Over time we replaced it with a four foot table that was countertop height, had a tablecloth on it. It was okay. But now we're finding that it's not really meeting our needs either. No, we have our cash box, our little checkout square, our drinks, our snacks, our, our paint paints, kit. kits. And anytime somebody wants to check out, we have to move all of that stuff so that we can accept the customer. Right, it just has one level surface and we're trying to squeeze everything on this little four foot table. And when they want to check out with their sign, they're trying to put it on the table, but we have too much junk in the way. Step one, we're gonna make our design. So let's start with our requirements first. Now that we've done this a couple of times, we kind of know what we want. So we know that it can't be any wider than the 48 inches. That was the perfect width. Any more than that, it's gonna take up too much space. We know we need additional space to store our stuff. So if it needs a top and maybe a shelf to it. We also want uh, the ability to break it down and travel with it. So it can't be something permanent, but I don't want it to take up any more space than the current table does because the trailer is pretty tight when you put nine wagons in there. We really just have enough room on the sides for the standing displays. I don't have a whole lot of extra room, so I don't want it to take up any more footprint and I want it to be an easy setup and take down. I want to be able to hide a cart or a wagon underneath it. I also want to be able to keep up my food and the cash box and everything out and have some kind of work surface and have a place where people can come place the signs so that they can check out. Yes. So as we discussed, we kind of knew what we wanted. We knew we needed a work surface, but then I had the bright idea that I wanted it to have a second tier or a second level. So I drew it up on the dry erase board so he can envision exactly what I was seeing in my head. I'm getting it, I'm getting it. I'm picking up what you're drawing down. <laughs> and this is where he made fun of me, but he took over, made his own version, and now you can really see what we're thinking. Well, I just redrew it to make sure that we were on the same page. <laughs> now, I don't know any 3D modeling software, so I'm gonna take our drawing from the whiteboard into Adobe Illustrator, and I'm gonna try to work something up in Adobe Illustrator. Good thing you've made all these 3D signs. You can really think in 3D now. I can think in 3D. I have all the pieces laid out in Adobe Illustrator. All of the light gray pieces are the checkout counter pieces, like the sides, the front, the shelves, the second tier. The dark gray areas are the areas that are gonna get cut out. I'll remove these when I'm making the cut file. The blue are tabs and I will unite these when I'm making the cut file. The red and orange, those are just spacers. I'll delete those when I'm making the cut file. I measured the half inch maple plywood and it's actually 0.47 inches. I want the slots to be tight so I could keep this whole thing stable and it won't be wobbly. Those are gonna be 0.48 inches with zero kerfing. But the slots where the sides and the front will slide together, I want those to be a little looser so the whole thing will go together a little easier. So I'm gonna make those a full half inch slot. The tabs are gonna stick up about 0.48 inches. The material thickness is 0.47 inches, but I'm gonna account for kerfing and add 0.01 inch to it. That way the tab is nice and flush on the top and on the second tier, so nothing will catch or get stuck down in the hole. I made the box for my tabs 0.96 inches, and then I aligned the middle of that box with the edge of the sides in the front. That way I don't have to mess around with making the tab the actual size, like 0.48 inches, and then trying to butt it up against, and when I do my Unite, I'll have a gap or something. I'm gonna keep the corners rounded, that way everything will slide together through the slots a little easier. 
Step two, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. So after I laid all of our design out, I know that I need two sheets of four by eight, whatever. I'm gonna use maple plywood. It's gonna be half inch and it's gonna be finished on both sides. That way it matches our standees. That's what we have now. We wanna keep the same aesthetic going. Yes, I don't want this to look any different than the rest of that look and feel that we have going on because those standards are pretty new. They're only like a year old, so let's keep it in theme. Step three, time for the test cuts. That wood was really expensive and I don't wanna mess it up if everything doesn't align like I think it will. So my first cut is gonna be on some cardboard. The wood that we got came sandwiched in between two pieces of four by eight cardboard, so that's perfect. We're gonna use that to test out all of our cuts. That way I'll know if I have enough material and if everything fits together. So we're gonna take the cardboard over to our Aeon Nova 14 and we're gonna cut it out. Pro tip, if you're cutting out cardboard on your laser, never leave it alone, never take your eyes off it, not even if you have to go to the bathroom. The cardboard mock-up was perfect. It gave us a great visual of what this is going to look like when we cut it out of the real wood. And with that, I noticed as I stood behind it that with a solid work surface on the top tier and a solid work surface on the second tier, the second tier ended up being mostly a cubby and I really wanted it to be more of a work surface. I want the top surface to just be a place where the customer can lay their sign, grab their wallet and check out. But the second surface, I want it to be more of a work surface for us so that I can make a bow, make change, and use that space down below. So while we were sitting there, the cardboard allowed us to cut out and make a visual of what we think the top tier should look like. It just needs a little cut out so that... We can actually see our hands. Yes, yes. We can work and use that surface instead of being able to hide things in that surface. Yeah, just actually use it. Usable surface. And with the peg holes cut out in the mock-up, I was able to very quickly see that the top row of holes had an even number, which meant if I were going to hang a sign or anything from those holes, it would either hang a little to the left or a little to the right. I know that from our standards. That was a lesson learned from our standards. So I asked him to swap that row so that the top row will actually have an odd number and I can hang something directly in the center. Step Four, production run. Now that we know everything fits together correctly and we have it like we like it, it's time to cut everything out of the half inch maple plywood. We're gonna cut everything out over on our Eon Nova 14, but before we do that, we have to swap out the lens. You know what's great about the Eon Nova 14 is it came with the two inch lens installed, but it also comes with a four inch lens. The four inch lens is great for cutting thicker materials, whereas the two inch lens is good for engraving and cutting thinner materials like quarter inch MDF. If you are new to lasers, this is a great time to explain why and when you would use different lenses. Common lens sizes are 1.5 inches up to four inch lenses. A 1.5 inch is great for ultra fine details. A two inch lens is a great all around lens and is great for both cutting and engraving where a four inch lens is great for cutting thicker materials or engraving concave areas like the bottom of a bowl or a dish. The lenses don't really look any different, but they focus the beam at different depths. Let's talk about depth of focus. The depth of focus is how deep the laser can maintain its precision without losing the sharpness of the cut or engraving. The focal length also affects the depth of focus. Shorter focal lengths have a shallower depth of focus which is great for fine details but less effective for thicker materials. Think of the laser like a super focused beam of light that has to hit a specific point in your material to do its job right. The focal point is where the beam is most concentrated. The depth of focus is the zone around this point where the beam remains effective enough to cut or engrave cleanly and precisely. We have it highlighted here in green. You can see when we stretch the focal length, the depth of focus also increases. To demonstrate, this rectangle represents our half inch material. When I align it under the one and a half inch lens, you can see that it will engrave, but the depth of focus isn't large enough to cut through. As I move it across the various lenses, you can see that the depth of focus on the four inch lens will allow us to cut through our half inch material. 
Here are the tools we'll be using to replace our lens. We're going to use an Allen wrench, the 4 inch lens, lens wipes, and the Aeon lens removal tool. First we're going to disconnect our air assist. That's a quick release. And there's just one screw here to release the lens holder. Our lens removal tool has a little notch in it which will align with a notch in the ring on the inside that's holding the lens in. We're going to unscrew this thing. It takes a moment to get it all the way out. And then here you can see the lens is just sitting on a silicone ring. We're going to put the lens ring and the silicone ring back in to the laser head so that we'll know where it is next time when we change it back. We'll just tighten the screw. We're going to set it at 10 because this will be the optimal setting for the 4 inch lens. We're going to reconnect our air assist using the quick release. Now we're going to use our smallest Allen wrench to remove the 4 inch lens holder. It slides right out. And this is the 4 inch lens. It is 101.6 millimeters. We're going to remove these three screws that hold the lens into the housing. And which side do you put the lens on? You'll notice that this side is completely flat. When I flip it over, you'll see that the other side is convex. And you'll want the convex side, the curved side, facing up. And I'm going to clean the lens again. I had already cleaned the other side. And we're going to slide it back into the housing and reinstall our two tiny little screws here. We'll click our autofocus. The head will refocus against our material and you can see that our lens is now sitting four inches from the material. Inside Lightburn, we're gonna run a material test cut card. This is found underneath laser tools. We're gonna do this to get our optimal settings for this material. On the initial test card, you can see that we have a range of settings. We will rerun this a second time to narrow down so we'll know exactly which settings we should use. For our project, we determined that 8 and 55 was going to be the best settings. I'm going to cut the half inch maple down on the panel saw. I'm going to cut it into pieces that will just fit the pieces that I'm cutting. So my 24 inch top, I'll cut a 25 inch piece. Here I'm loading the materials into the laser. The great thing about the Eon is that the laser bed is level with the front so I don't have to set it down in there. I can just slide it right in. And then here's the famous remote. This thing is great. I can just press start. Each cut took between 15 and 25 minutes, depending on how many peg holes they had in it. Step five, assembly. Okay, fingers crossed that everything still lines up out of a half inch maple. We have not tested it yet. As the pieces were coming out the laser, I really wanted to start putting it together and test it and see how it fit. He would I not wanted to let do it me. real time. If yes. it fails, it fails. <laughs> That's it. So you get to watch whether or not this works or doesn't work. All right, let's go. I wanted to wheel it in like we are really at a craft show. So I actually put it on our uh, little dolly that we use. And we stack them in the order in which we think that we would use them. So we purposely put the sides first. And then we decided that, you know what, the first thing should probably be the brace that's gonna hold it. It's gonna make it easier to put the back on. Now, I feel like I'm moving in slow motion but that's only because this is our first time assembling it and I'm trying to assemble it in my head at the same time. We decided to put the back brace on first. That way we would know how wide the sides needed to be to put the front on. It slid in relatively easily. Yeah, I mean, we hammered it in, but that's only because it was crooked, I think. Now this piece was pretty easy. You can see we're being very gentle with it because this is our first time. I was thinking in my head the whole time, can I do this alone? So after I've done it a few times, I think we'll figure out how we can do a one person setup. I think you can do it. I think it can be done pretty easily with one person. As long as you put that back brace on first, I think you'll be fine. And I refuse to move that dolly out of the way. I'm going to trip over it the entire time. <laughs> And this was great. You, you made this nice and snug. This is where you were saying you changed the uh, yeah. curving to be a little tighter. 
for the top, right? Yeah, I wanted this this front. I wanted the front to be able to slide in pretty easily so that one person could do it. But I was hoping that these tight little slots and tabs on the top here would like really keep it stable and keep it together. I wanted the burnt side on the inside. So there's a little flashing on the inside of each of these. Now and then... it was pretty tight to hammer in there. We did have to kind of pound it in, but mm -hmm. I think that's good because I want it to be able to last an entire weekend and not get wobbly. I think the more times we put it together and take it apart, it'll also... Yeah, it might wear in a little bit. I'm really trying to get it down perfect. It's I know, it's perfect. there. I was watching you. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll hit mine one more time too because of no reason. It was good. Again, it slides in easy. That was easy. Now I just have to hammer this down. I feel like mine was doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, are you I, even doing I, anything? It slid in a your, little bit. Your I tiny think. little hammers. <laughs> and maybe we should bring like the rubber mallet. That might make it a little bit easier. Nah, I don't think you need the rubber mallet. Yeah, you, you were able to tap it, went it in pretty okay. good. I mean, and this is coming together pretty quickly. And I am super happy that everything lined up. I know every time I was holding my breath, okay? <laughs> Now will the top fit on? Now will the slots on the sides line up? And I gotta say, right about here is when I was like, uh-oh, they're not lining up because I can get my side in, but look like you're having trouble with your side, so I thought maybe it was a little short, but then... Yeah, you, once you got yours in, I was like, look, I feel like that was doing yeah, what is that? nothing. I don't your know. tiny little hammer, get out of there. <laughs> Go on now, get. So yeah, I think it took about three minutes to put together. Look at this thing. Yeah, see, it's, it's stable. It. It's yeah, nice you can't wiggle it. It's nice and stable. Looking, but we're both smiling. We're yeah, both we're, happy. we're so we're happy. so proud of this thing. <laughs> so proud. So what I didn't show is that we used some dowels, some one-inch dowel rods. I cut them down to about six inches so that we could put them in the peg holes, and I slid them in the side peg holes, and we can hang some. Our and, shopping bags right yep. there. And it holds the shelf underneath. A See, there's shelf. a little shelf. And it makes that shelf adjustable. So if I don't have a wagon under there, I can move that shelf down and have a little extra room up underneath me. Yeah, it's perfect. <clears throat> I mean, it is really perfect. You can hang things on the front. We could hang 10 inches. We could hang ornaments. Oh, we could yeah. just hang a sign, All our kinds of stuff. logo sign, whatever we want on the front of it. And here we really did pack it full of pretty much everything we would have. I wanted to make sure it. it would be able to hold everything and didn't get saggy. I have that brace in the back making sure it doesn't get saggy. And yeah. I just wanted to check it. And it still holds the wagon. I am so excited. This turned out exactly like I envisioned it. It has the perfect workspace. I think this is going to, well, I know it's going to meet all of the needs and all of my it requirements. Does. It meets all of my needs. I can keep my food and my drink up there <laughs> and I don't have to move it or feel like it's in the way of somebody trying to check out. I can still make a bow and then leave the bow, move it aside and still be able to check someone out. This has all the bells and whistles. And you did such a great job. Thanks, baby. Was it was like... your vision. <laughs> I saw it on the whiteboard and I, I brought it to life. <laughs> well, big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. That is the best way to support this channel. You should join us over on Patreon where we have all free files for you guys. We have a Discord channel, Zoom calls, after shows. It's a fun time. The community is the best. Yep, yeah, it's worth the community, worth it for the community alone. Well, we're about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the Patreon after show, we will see you next week where we'll do a building and make it again. And that thing is way too heavy for me to balance. You know, I'll have to just... I don't know, it's really not that heavy. I think you, well, can, you might balance, be able to I, do it. Maybe. <laughs> maybe.